okay right so now we will be discussing the topic of bipolar disorder as the image um, uh, that is uh, attached on the screen it shows that a person who is suffering from bipolar disorder has a manic phase and then they have a depressive phase as well right so um, the symptoms are when you have mania the some somebody who has bipolar disorder and they're going through the condition called mania so they talk excessively they have racing thoughts they're hostile they sleep less and they're delusional and when they are suffering from the depressive phase so they have extreme fatigue uh, there's prolonged sadness memory loss pure poor nutrition right and if 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 you remember i told you before earlier that uh, bipolar disorder is actually a genetic condition as well right it runs through a family right okay so how exactly we are going to treat the manic phase we'll talk about it right because we have also already talked about antidepressants now we'll talk about how to treat mania right so the thing is you administer lithium okay yeah you you heard me right that's lithium uh, the met metallic mineral so what happens is this this uh, uh, mon uh, when you administer lithium okay I, i'm sure you do remember this entire cycle when we were talking about gpcrs in my first few videos if you have forgotten the entire cycle and how exactly they are working so you should go back to the video uh, of uh, g protein coupled receptors maybe it's good for you to revise that anyways so what happens is um, this gpcr okay it enact it activates uh, the entire cycle okay and then you see as a result when we look at the ultimate main chemicals which are actually playing the important role okay that is this pip2 and then we have um uh, diacylglycerol and then inositol triphosphate right so these will be produced and this diacylglycerol is actually uh, going to produce a mania right so uh, th therefore and guys if you remember we talked about second messenger system right so that means here pip2 is going to act like a second messenger which is actually initiating a cascade of events right so what do we do is this that we need to inhibit this cycle we want this um uh pip2 not to produce any more dag and ip3 right so in order to do so what we do is this we administer lithium now this lithium actually uh, what it does is this you see this ip3 is used back okay it produces inositol and this inositol is actually reused uh, in order to produce my inositol and then to produce pip2 right so we are actually inhibiting this cycle right we are inhibiting conversion of uh, or you can say not conversion resynthesis or reusage of ip3 in order to produce more of pip2 we are inhibiting this step right by administering lithium so what lithium does is this it inhibits the enzyme impas right and when no more inositol myo inositol would be produced as a result no more pip2 would be produced and as a result the entire cycle would obviously stop right so um you see here it's mentioned that ip3 and uh, dag mediated signals they the eventual functioning that it does is this it uh, neuronal gro growth cone spreading hypo uh, campal ltp stress induced cognitive impairments on all of these are the functions of ip3 and uh, dag right uh this is the entire uh, whatever i have just talked to you right um this is the um, entire what do you say entire process whatever is happening so 
um, if you want to go through it, you should pause the video and read it. It's exactly the same what I have just told you, right? Uh, okay. Um, moving on, lithium is given orally, right? So it uh, the iron is excreted by the kidney. Which iron? Lithium iron. Okay. So lithium ion is ex, uh, lithium ion is given orally and it is excreted by the kidney, right? The, so the lithium salts can be toxic. Uh, why exactly we are saying, uh, first of all, we said lithium and then we said iron and then we are saying salt because you see initially it is given in the form of, um, you know, carbonate like lithium carbonate and stuff like that, okay? So lithium salts can be toxic, has narrow, safety factor and therapeutic index, just like the um, cardiac glycosides, if you remember, we studied that. So the common adverse effects uh, one, can uh, one can suffer from if they are taking lithium is headache, dry mouth, polydipsia, polyuria, and polyphagia. Uh, so uh, polyuria is that a uh, huge volume of urine is produced very frequently. Um, and polyphagia is again, a hunger disorder. Like you just feel like that you want to eat again and again and again. It's an extreme, um, an extreme condition of hunger, okay? It is not, do not confuse it with any other bulimia or any other condition, okay? And uh, yeah, polydipsia is actually excessive thirst, okay? And then, of course, excessive drinking of water. Then we have GI distress, uh, fine hand tremor, dizziness, fatigue, dermatological reaction, sedation, ataxia. But these few symptoms which I'm about to mention, they're caused when lithium is excessively higher in the plasma. So ataxia, slurred speech, cross tremor, confusion, convulsion happens when lithium gets super high in the blood. Uh, then the diabetes insipidus that results from taking lithium can be treated with amyloride. Um, uh, so thyroid functions may be decreased and should be monitored. Lithium causes no noticeable effect on normal individuals. It is not a sedative euphoriant or depressant. It is just treating uh, mania condition. It is actually just stopping the mania condition, okay? By stopping an enzyme, right? That is producing PIP2. Uh, then we have other drugs. So several anti-epileptic drugs, including most notably uh, carbamazepine, valproic acid, and lem uh, lemotrigrine have been identified and FDA approved as mood stabilizers being used successfully in the treatment of bipolar disorder. Other agents that may improve many symptoms include the older drugs and the newer um, antipsychotics, which we have, I think, talked about. Then we have uh, the atypical antipsych uh, antipsychotics uh, have also received FDA approval for the treatment of mania. Benzodiazepine are also frequently used as injective treatment for the acute stabilization of patients with mania. Thank you so much, everybody. That is it for today.